Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide, and this is the successor to one of my most popular videos from last year, Server Meshing from the Player's Perspective. Except that I've decided to rename it this year's version, What to Expect from Server Meshing, because so much has been hoped for from this technology that I think the expectations from server meshing are most likely too high particularly in the early iterations of it. In addition, this topic, thanks to an extensive presentation at the Virtual Citizen Con and a lengthy Q&A, has perhaps grown beyond just one video, which I will be releasing every few days. This is the first video in which I will discuss some of the technology already in the game that is specifically object container streaming and the problems that are trying to be addressed with server meshing. But first, some basics behind the basics. When we are talking about servers and server meshing, we are talking about servers in the sense of a software process that provides a service, either a service to the client application running on your computer or another service. Pretty much the whole of computing is now divided into applications, which the user runs on their system or phone, mobile phone or whatever, and services, which are providing services to those applications or other services. Now, there are technologies that have similar goals for the hardware servers in the rack of a data center. They are called clustering and virtualization, but for Star Citizen, those are the responsibility of Amazon Web Services, not CIG. When it comes to services, these are usually described as having layers. There is the front-end layer of servers that provides services directly to your application, such as the game server and the chat server. Then there is the back-end layer of services, which provide information to the front-end servers and each other. This can include, for example, your UEC account, your user authentication, dynamic game economy, and such. And then there are core services that are provided by Amazon Web Services and for which CIG has no ability or probably desire to alter. These include database services, communication services, message services, etc. Now, in my original video last year, I presumed that CIG would be following that basic model of front-end and back-end and core services. But to cut out the middleman, CIG is making with server meshing a layer of services that talk to both your client and to your game server at the same time making them like both front-end and back-end servers. These are called a hybrid service, and they are forming a key part of server meshing called the replication layer. We're going to get more into the replication layer in later videos. Our subject for this video, though, is object container streaming, more commonly called just OCS. As you travel around Star Citizen, there is a zone of perception surrounding you. Things outside the zone of perception exist in the universe, but I'm getting no information about them. This also goes for real life. If I'm driving around LA, I might come to a certain turn in the road and see the LAX traffic control tower. The tower was there all along and being seen by other people, just not me. But if my driving around Los Angeles was an MMO using OCS, I would now be receiving a stream of information about the LAX control tower. It isn't much of a stream because unless something drastic happens, it's just going to sit where it is doing nothing. The actual calculation of the shaded polygons for the tower as I move on the road is calculated locally on my computer. And eventually the LAX control tower will disappear from my rear view and my involvement in the object stream will be removed, called network bind calling. But you might think, sure, it may be doing nothing, but with thousands of people seeing it, that's a lot of information to be output, right? Not really, because of something called multicast addresses. We've just had the Winter Olympics happening, so let's say you're watching the curling competition stream live with millions, okay, maybe thousands, of other people. The server at the broadcasting company isn't sending an individual stream of video to each one of you. Rather, it is sending a single stream of video with a list of recipient internet addresses, not just one. And the routers handle the distribution of the stream to all of us curling fans around the world. In the same way, OCS the system maintains for every object container in the server a recipient list of those who need to be aware of it. And that includes a recipient list for my object container as well. So let's switch from that faraway control tower to all the cars on the road with me. We're slowing down, speeding up, changing lanes, honking horns, giving rude hand gestures, and so on. So each of us are needing to send and also receive a quite active stream of information. And object containers will be added and removed as cars enter the my vision or turn down other streets, not to mention all the buildings along the side of the road, all the terminals, as they enter and leave our zones of perception. So even with the efficiency of multicasting, something needs to be done to help the server. And that is server-side object container streaming. 
The easiest way to start to explain server-side OCS is with the takeoff of an old adage. If a tree falls in the woods and nobody is there to hear it, does the server even need to know anything at all about it? As long as they're an ability, when somebody does travel to that location where the tree object container is, it doesn't. As long as there is some place that does know that the tree has fallen, the server will learn from it when the server does need that information stream. On the server side OCS, it means that the server only needs to be in the recipient list of an object container if at least one of the players it is managing by that server also needs it. Server side OCS means that the server doesn't have to keep the whole universe in its memory only the subset that the players that it is managing sees. That allows the universe to grow beyond what one server can manage in its memory. Server-side OCS has been a big part of allowing the verse to grow to as large as it currently is. So that is the state of object container streaming. And under it, there are two nightmare scenarios. And that is the absolute dispersal and absolute concentration. Absolute dispersal means that the players have spread out so evenly that there is no place that at least one player is seeing. So the server-side OCS has to keep everything in its memory and become overwhelmed. Absolute concentration is when all the players get into one room or otherwise in a situation where everybody sees everybody. And that is mostly a problem for your own client computer, not the server. You see, if I'm in a room with just one person, server sends out an object container stream about me to just the other occupant and sends out their object container stream to just me. The data is the same, but the recipient list is short. Now put 100 people in the same room and the data has to be sent out about my actions is the same, but the recipient list has 99 others and their recipient lists are all having 99 too. The server is sending out the same data, but just with a longer recipient list. But on my side of the client app, I've gone from having to process one other object container for one character to having to process 99 object container streams for 99 characters. And that also means many more polygons to process and render in every frame. That doesn't mean that there aren't server problems created by absolute concentration. Fire off a weapon in a room with 100 occupants, and the server has a tough time figuring out who, if anyone, was hit. But character concentration is mostly a client-side problem. So even though absolute dispersal and absolute concentration are vastly different problems, CIG has been using the same blunt tool against both, the 50-player server cap. That way, they can't crash a server even if it's perfectly dispersed, and if they are all in one room, they likely won't completely crash a client. But this is the really important thing about setting the expectations for server meshing. As a server technology, it is mostly going to be good for solving the server problem, absolute dispersion, and less so for the mostly client problem, absolute concentration. Other techniques will be needed to solve the player concentration situations, and I'll get into those in the rest of the videos, but next we'll cover the new but very old concept of a shard in our next video. And now for the Go the Channel Ship giveaway. As of recording, we are at half of the subscriber goal and about a third of the member goal to release to some lucky player their choice of the Anvil Liberator, the ship shipping ship for shipping your ships, or the MISC Odyssey Long Duration Exploration Carrier. One entry per video, members are entered automatically, and if the winner is a member as of the publication of the winning video, they will win both the Liberator and the Odyssey. For non-members, just be a subscriber and somehow comment using the secret word. And the secret word for this video is the item at LAX that I used as an example of object container streaming. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Race Guide.